the leaf should follow. This is crucial because if your leaves point in the opposite direction, it might look a little bit weird or unnatural. Makes sense. I'm going to draw on that. Okay, so... They're just simple leaves. Hers aren't as pointy as mine, is that bad? Same. Okay, cool. I was like, um... I think leaves are pretty easy, pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Watch what you thought we were going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Different using pencil of watercolor. So here, if the lemon is hanging at the edge of the branch, the lemon itself should be slightly tilted. The branch is then connected to the point of the lemon, and the leaves growing out of the branches should be tilted upwards towards the light and falling to the direction of the lemon. This might be a little bit confusing because it is basically zoomed in. So think of it as if it's growing out from a tree, as I'm drawing right here. So as you can probably imagine, if the leaves were to grow the opposite way and... Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so... You know it's serious when you're both quiet. Yeah. Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Should I practice the leaves too? Yeah. Towards the trunk instead of the lemon or towards the light. light. It will look very <laughs> off, so always keep this in mind when painting. Or try to get used to drawing it out first until the concept makes sense. I'll show you as an example here what it would look like if the leaves are pointing at the wrong direction. Yeah, After like you're comfortable with drawing it out, yourself. let's get your yeah. watercolors out and swatch out some of the colors that we might use. I have three oh. yellow colors on my Koi palette, so I'll just swatch all three which are Lemon Yellow, Orlin Hue, and Permanent Yellow D. Okay. So do you want to swatch them or do we just... We can just wing it. That's cool. what I do with my life. Yeah. That makes sense. All right. So, my camera stopped recording, and then we were at memory, and then... Technical difficulties. Yeah. So, we're back. Uh, we did choose some colors. So, they're going off of a palette just of, like, regular yellow tones, and then it gets kind of deeper towards, like, an almost a burnt orange. Yeah, so... We're going to mix and match. And we can just, we're just going to wing it. Yeah. So play around with the ratio, or as I'm doing here, I'm playing with the colors cute. and painting the lemon out oh, with my brush and filling it in. So do that and see which color you prefer, or mix the colors around until you get the shade of Ooh, yellow that you want. Oh, I cute. also like to leave a little bit of white negative space. It's not thought out into being in a specific position, but this white suggests highlights on the lemon and it makes the painting look less bulky in my opinion. After that, think of a color that is a bit more orange, so you could, say, add more permanent yellow deep into your mixture and paint the <coughs> There it is! <coughs> Push you. Thank you! The area, following the curve of the lemon to show the roundness. <sighs> Play around with the paint. If your paint is completely dry underneath, the shadows will be very distinct. But if the first layer is still a little bit damp, the color will spread and soften up. You'll get used to the feeling with experience and see which one you prefer. For the leaves, I'm just going to play around with the color yellow-green and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of permanent yellow deep to dull down the colors. If mm. it's a little bit too dull for your liking, you can also add a little bit of oral in hue, which is the second shade of yellow that we switched previously That's to brighten up the green. Mm -hmm. Because I personally find that the yellow green looks a little bit too. I'm just gonna go for my color. After you've swatched your colors, try painting the leaves and branches to see what. So we're taking an ad break. Ad break, ad break. Don't forget to follow Hunley at Hunley Bonita. He's pretty photogenic. Looks like on the 
the subject that you're going to paint. Last but not least, if you're still unsure, you can always do some exercises with your brush so you could have a better feel to make every single This one actually explains everything. The other one they're just like I know. straight to the point. I mean, it's good if you're trying to learn, but we just trying to get straight to the point. Yeah. There. I'm long. I gotta get the work out of this. Yeah. Also, it's a little hot in here. Pencil first, could you fill it in? Or try drawing out the outline of the lemon with your brush first, then filling it in with the color. Okay, so she's really awesome at explaining everything, but I think we're just gonna get to the tutorial and wing it. Yeah, that works for me. Five minutes, twenty-nine, thirty seconds, thirty seconds in there. Okay, let's get to painting. As this is just repeated shapes that we're painting, you can either turn this into a pattern or paint it with a border around like I did in my previous video. You can really apply this differently, like even in a wreath. At this point, I wasn't too sure what I was going to do, so I just started painting the lemons to spread across my page and I thought I'd fill it in along the way if I miss some spots. You can follow me and paint along if you want, but of course you're free to create your own art. I'm going to be repeating the shapes a lot, so hopefully by watching me you get an idea of how I approach every single element. I do like to place the lemons before I paint the branches though because I find it easier to spread out and if I need to fill in some spaces, I can just fill it in with more leaves and branches. Typically, I want the lemons to be evenly distributed so it's not too heavy on a certain part of the painting. The painting is not too sour. After I painted a few base colors for the lemons, I then add some of the shadow color. I don't really want the paint to completely dry before I add the shadow so the lines are not too harsh. But if some are more okay. dry, Oh, mine are all facing the same way. <laughs> mine were, and I'm just like, just turn around. <laughs> really? I'm sorry. <laughs> She's also a singer, so. Mm. High school. High I school know. I was, and now I can barely sing along with the radio. <laughs> it's. She doesn't give herself enough credit. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> we have filmed this outro. Twice? Twice. This is the third time. So. <laughs> Whoops. Yep. Uh, we finished. Here is mine. Mine. I didn't know what to put in the center, so I just put Esme's YouTube channel name. So, it's a gift for her for her late birthday. Thank you, love. Months ago. Month ago. Month ago. Month ago. So. Yeah, and with that, we are going to end here, and don't forget to follow Ruby on Instagram. Sweet Southern Mermaid. I also have a Facebook page for my art and photography at Ruby and Art and Photography. Pretty simple. And don't forget to follow Hunley on his Instagram, at Hunley the Winnie Dog. He's pretty photogenic. Yeah. And don't forget to follow my Instagram. Up here somewhere. Wow. Yeah. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button and go ahead and ring that bell. I'll keep up on her so she'll actually upload once a week again, even if I've got to be here to babysit. Or be in the video. I'm cool with that too. I mean, I love the attention. Alright guys, bye! Bye! I love the attention. I love the attention. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to them, Esmeralda. Oh, that's fun to put in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell them about how.